Okay, so here's just one more question for an optimization problem. This one is gonna be including cost of material. So a rectangular storage container with an open top is said to have a volume of 10 meters cubed. The length of its base is twice the width. Material for the base costs $10 per square meter. Material for the sides costs $6 per square meter. Find the cost of materials for the cheapest such container. So as usual, we should start this problem off by drawing a picture. This is a rectangular storage container with an open top. So we can say that it looks something like this, like a rectangular prism. And we can see that the top is open here. Okay, so once we have the picture drawn, typically we should think of our two formulas that are gonna be associated with this shape. And the two formulas are going to be volume and surface area. So we could label the sides, uh, we can label them length, width, height, and we know that the volume for a rectangular prism, uh, prism is volume equals length times width times height, right? So a little bit trickier would be the surface area. What I'm going to do before getting into the surface area formula though, I'm actually going to replace the length with the uh, with this sentence right here. We know the length of the base is twice the width. So we know L is going to be twice the width. That means we can actually rewrite L as 2W, right? 2W because it's twice the width. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna go up here and change this to instead of length times width times height, let me rewrite it like this for now, length times width times height, length will become 2w. So it's 2w times w times height. And then we can actually just combine w times w as w squared. So the volume here is actually going to be 2 times the width squared times the height. And I'm just going to get rid of this just so it doesn't get extra confusing with other formulas floating around. Okay, so we still need a another formula, but like we said, the other formula is going to be surface area because this is a three-dimensional object here. Surface area, anytime your sides are rectangular, it's typically a little bit easier. That means we just have to find the area of all of these sides individually and then add up the result. So let's take a look at the first side right here. And hopefully you guys agree with me since this is a rectangular prism, this area is gonna be the same as the area of the side in the back, right? Because the opposite sides are gonna be the same here. So the area of those sides is gonna be just length, well, length times height, but the length is 2w. So it's 2w times h because it's this times the height right there. So there's two of them, so it's gonna be 2WH plus 2WH. And let's take a look at the sides now, the actual sides. So we have this side and this side, which once again are the same. That area is gonna be width times height. So it's gonna be plus width times height and then there's two of them so we have plus width times height plus width times height and then there's one more side of this rectangular prism it's kind of hidden and that's the base right so that's going to be this base down here and that's going to be 2w times w or 2w squared now maybe you're saying to yourself, well, why don't we have two of those like we did for the other ones? The reason is, is because this is an open top. So there is no surface area because there's no top to this rectangular prism. So we can combine like terms in this surface area formula and we'll get the surface area is going to be 
WH plus 2 WH which we can actually combine those as well. We can combine a lot of things here. We get 6 WH if we combine all of these right here. And that's going to be plus the 2 W squared. Okay, so we have our two formulas here. Now we need to figure out which one is going to be our constraint, which one is going to be optimized. We are trying to find, well, maybe it's easier. Let's look at, let's just go right in order here. Material, or sorry, not that sentence, right from the beginning here. A rectangular storage container has a volume of 10 meters cubed. So we're actually told the volume, right? We are told the volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace that V with a 10. So that's going to be a 10. And this is going to be our constraint equation which means this is going to be the equation that we have to solve for one variable in terms of another variable. So before we even take a look at, you know, any, anything more to this, let's just decide what variable we want to solve for here. Hopefully it's obvious that it's going to be easiest to solve for H because the W has a squared on it. The H is just H. So if we want to solve this for H, we would have to divide both sides by two W squared. So dividing both sides by two W squared, gives us h equals 5, because 10 divided by 2 gives us the 5, 5 over w squared. So this is going to be what we're going to plug in to the other equation, surface area, in a second. So you could plug it in now. I'm going to wait one second to plug this in, though. The reason is because we need to adjust our equation just a little bit. We didn't really do anything too different yet, right? This is pretty similar to the questions that we've already done. We need to take into account the cost for the base materials and the cost for the sides materials. So we're actually gonna have an adjusted equation based on the surface area. And I'm just gonna call this surface area with a little subscript for cost. So we know that we have four sides here, right? Four sides in this drawing. This side, this side, this side, and this side. All of those sides, when we combine like terms, that was this right here, the 6WH, after we combined all of these like terms. We know that the cost for the sides is $6 per square meter. All we have to do to take this into account here, that $6, is multiply 6 for $6 by that 6WH term. Same idea for the next part, where it says the base costs $10. So the base was just that one term. It was this part down here. It was this base. All we have to do to take that into account is multiply that cost, $10, by 2w squared. And now we are good to go, and we're going to do this the same way we have been doing it. Also, we know what we're trying to find. We're find to try, trying to find the cost of materials. If we're trying to find the cost of materials, that is going to be surface area. Materials will be an area, not a volume. So what we actually have to do here is we need to minimize the cost, which means we need to plug in H into this formula in terms of W, take the derivative, apply the first derivative test, and from there we'll find our value for W, and then the minimum cost is gonna be plugging W back in to the surface area formula. And we knew that we were minimizing here because it says cheapest. Forgot to mention that cheapest, so minimizing. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in our H. So that's going to be SA cost is going to be, if you plug in your H here and simplify, we end up getting 180 
over w and then the second term here we get 20 w squared so once again this was just from plugging in uh, the h from up here 5 over w squared into here that whole term simplifies to 180 over w all right so in my opinion that is the hard part now we can do something that we already know how to do and that's going to be apply the first derivative test set the derivative so find the derivative uh, set the derivative equal to zero and solve and then we just have to verify that it is in fact a minimum value so the derivative here so i'm just going to use this notation with a little prime notation the derivative of this first term you can either do you can bring the w up in to the numerator with a negative one exponent and apply the power rule or you can do the quotient rule either way we will get negative 180 over w squared for the derivative of the first term derivative of the second term nice and easy is the power rule so just 40 w and now we are going to take this and set it equal to zero and solve for w okay so we have it set equal to zero and now solving this for w let's get let's add this to the left hand side so we add it so it becomes positive on the left hand side and then we have to multiply both sides by w squared and at the same time let's divide both sides by 40. so 180 divided by 40 will simplify to 9 over 2 and then w squared times w gives us w cubed and now all we have to do is take the cube root of both sides to solve for w so w equals the cube root of 9 over 2 and I'm just gonna round here I'm gonna round and plug this in we end up getting 1 about 1.65 okay so what is this value what does this value mean this is the width so if we took a look back up here to see what the units are the units are in meters so this width would be 1.65 meters but now we need to verify that it's the cheapest which means we need to verify that it is a minimum value with this width so first derivative test we set up our number line and here is our value that we just found 1.65 that was from the derivative so uh, the sa prime and then we put the normal function the regular function up above and we need to pick a value to the left let's pick one pick a value to the right let's pick two so if we plugged one into the derivative uh, so plug it in yourself and you can see that we'll end up getting a negative value so the derivative is negative if the derivative is negative that means the function is decreasing over that interval if we plug in a 2 into the derivative we would end up getting a positive value so positive derivative means the function is increasing so we can see that if it changes from decreasing to increasing at this point then that's going to end up being a minimum value so the very last thing that we have to do to find our answer here what the actual minimum cost is the minimum cost is going to be taking this value of 1.65 for W and plugging it back in the surface area cost the actual total cost of material function and evaluating it and that's going to be our minimum cost so we're going to take that and plug it in so the surface area cost we're going to plug in uh, 1.65 or the cube root of 9 over 2 so that's 180 over 1.65 plus 20 times 1.65 squared that's going to give us a minimum cost of $163.54.
So there is our final answer for this problem. So it's really only just the extra step here of taking into account the cost of, in this case, the sides in the base. You just have to remember to multiply those by, the, by their correct terms.